Hey, Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top-rated sportsbook. Make sure you download the app and use the promo code CHGO when you sign up. Luke Stuckmeyer, Cody Del Mendo, Corey Friedman, and a late-arriving Ryan Herrera wow, who valeted his car. Bow. And the man in the box. <laughs> Mr. Greg Huss, the expert on Cubs prospects from the new podcast, Cubs on Deck, which, by the way, is a great name, Greg. Uh, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate it. Uh, how's, how's it going with the new pod? We're, we like to keep all the podcasts friendly. It's good, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get this thing going. We have one show up, uh, Brian Smith, which you guys have had on a couple different times, I think, right? Uh, yep. From Bleacher Nation was a co-host uh, with me on that first show, but... It's just it's just prospects all the time. That's all I, I that's all I do anyways is just talk about <laughs> prospects all the time. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get this thing going and and uh, we'll be out pretty frequently throughout the off season. Get some guests on, all that good stuff. But man, I'm 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 loving right now with it's a lot of prospect conversation. So, uh, can I make a request, Greg? Hell that, yeah. You know, you know, I'm not like some guru for you. you like I use you for like your tweets. <laughs> You send a positive tweet about DJ hers or whoever, and I'm like, all right, I'm in. Because if, you, yeah. if you're saying so, then I'm in. So I'm, my request is the first or second or third or whenever you want, honestly, the first one of those times when you get an actual prospect on the pod, I would like to co-host with you. Hell yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds awesome, dude. I mean, Because I would just love to talk too, to them. I- <laughs> I know that I know that like people love hearing from the players too, right? I mean, I, I, that that's part of like why I do this is like kind of connecting people to those prospects, so they're not just like prospects; they're actually actual human beings. So yeah, I think that'd be awesome. I would love that. I, right. We could do that, and then I could then sway them into coming on to this podcast, and then we just start a whole trail of, you know, the you, whole you get where, yeah, you get where I'm coming from here. Greg, I will <laughs> volunteer my services when you talk to Jordan Wogu. For obvious uh, well, reasons, I, mean, oh. I, I figured, yeah. Well, yeah. you're you're not as much on the on the Brandon Hughes bandwagon, the Michigan State guy, or I don't want to talk about Ohio that. State. We're not going to talk about that, Greg. <laughs> We've spent a couple minutes here just letting Ryan catch his breath. I see his chest going. My, <laughs> I sprinted. You know how much cardio I did in that last like two up minutes up and down the stairs, more than I've done in the last like three months. How did it all go? You got your car parked safely. I parked. That, this is the tightest Out parking the garage I've ever it experienced in my entire life. We're good. All right. No toe. Every- Everything's safe. Sorry. So happy uh, Rule 5 Protection Day, right? Brandon says, happy Rule 5 Protection Day to all those who celebrate. I know that Greg does. And this is a big day for Cubs fans that maybe are not as into, like, rosters and specific moves and the, the inner workings of a baseball team than maybe Greg is. This is an important day because you have to protect a certain amount of players if you don't, they're eligible to the Rule 5 draft next month. And so that usually lends to this day creating some trades. Like teams are thinking, all right, if we have to create a space, let's get rid of somebody. Or if they know they're going to have somebody who's likely to be taken, they'd at least make the move of that prospect to try and trade him for somebody else. So I guess, Greg, the first thing, I don't want to date the podcast too much, but in your opinion... Who should the Cubs absolutely be protecting? Now, that, you know, like Nico Horner is an obvious one, but what prospects that are in the system do you say, okay, this guy cannot be unprotected today, and then vice versa, what guys maybe would you keep available at least? Yeah, so it, it really helped uh, that Hayden Wesneski and Jeremiah Estrada were added to the Major League roster at the end of the, the regular season. Because we don't have to worry about those guys. They're already added. So it really leaves three three players that are no-brainers. They will be added to the 40-man roster. Um, the deadline's uh, 5 p.m., I believe. And yep. so it'll be announced at 4.59, I'm sure, by the Chicago Cubs because that's how it works. Um, <laughs> and it'll be Brennan Davis, Kevin Alcantara, and Ben Brown. So, I mean, Kevin uh, uh, Brennan Davis has been on people's radars for plenty of time. That's a no-brainer. Even given his rough season this past year, doesn't matter. He's the top prospect in the system. He'll be added. Um, Kevin Alcantara may be the highest upside of anyone in the entire system and one of the highest upsides in all of baseball entirely. So you, you can't risk losing a guy like him in the Rule 5 draft. And then Ben Brown was acquired this year for David Robertson. And so 
you kind of, as you're acquiring a guy like Ben Brown, you are well aware that he's rule five eligible going into the off season. And you have the mindset of planning on protecting him, especially when he was a major piece uh, acquired at the deadline this year. Okay. So who might be kind of borderline at this point where you say, okay, this guy could be left available and either a, he could get picked up or B, you know, not everybody that's, eligible for the rule five draft is going to get taken off your team so that yeah. that's one thing to keep in mind i'll, I'll try not to see it too often awful, awful nerdy uh if you guys want to get all the deep dives then you can check out <laughs> cubs on deck because brian and yes. i went into like absurd levels of detail on that on that show <laughs> uh but really what you're trying to do like at from the cubs front office office mindset right is you're trying to protect who you think another club might select away from you in the rule five so just because a guy had a really good year in 2022 that does not necessarily mean they're going to get added to the 40-man roster here today you're you're trying to dive into the mindset of other front offices and say will this team draft him and utilize him and keep him on the major league roster for the entire year in 2023 and so you kind of by default look at guys that can carve out roles and the the first place you look are relievers that pump gas right you can always use a guy like that in your bullpen. You can even hide him a little bit in your bullpen if you want to. You have a guy like Cam Sanders who was recently converted to the bullpen. He's a good example of a guy who might get selected away from you in the Rule 5 draft. Uh, Dennis Correa is another guy that pumps triple digits on the gun and it has a really good uh, slider as well. And so those guys, even if they're not quite ready for the big leagues yet, they still have the nasty stuff that can like you can get away with some stuff at the big league level even. Um, so those are two guys in the bullpen. And then in that same breath, you got a guy like Ryan Jensen, who was a first round pick by this organization. He's been used as a starting pitcher up to this point, but if he gets drafted and converted to the bullpen, you're letting that triple digits, uh, fastball eat in the bullpen. He does have some good off speed offerings and you're kind of going with the mindset of, okay, you can convert him back to the, to the uh, starting rotation in future years if you want to but you kind of hide him in the bullpen uh, for a year and utilize him and, and let that stuff play up a little bit. So you got two big relievers, um, and then Ryan Jensen is that starter that can be turned in, into into a reliever um, at the big league level. And if I'm correct, Greg, as we're recording this, with all the moves the Cubs made, and I think the last one yesterday would have been Hayward, that yes. took us to, what, 33? 33. So the Cubs have seven open slots at the moment? Yeah, and and – they won't use all of those slots right. to protect guys here, right? So I, I think this is just this is an exceptionally strange season as far as Rule 5 draft and 40-man roster protection because there wasn't a Rule 5 draft last year. So there's double the amount of guys eligible for the Rule 5 draft as what we've seen in past years. Um, and because of that, it's just a lot of teams are dealing with this roster crunch that we've talked about the Cubs have a lot of, um, but there's plenty of other teams that have the same issue. Um, throughout the league. So uh, I, we're looking at those three. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that four players will probably get protected. Um, those three that I named and then probably one more guy. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if they go up to five, but any more than five is just, we should have zero expectations that six plus guys are getting protected um, today, this afternoon. Yeah, Greg, my question uh, also regarding the rule five draft is like, so I know it got, it got moved up a few days from what we were expecting. I think the 18th, and then all of a sudden it's the 15th, yeah. right? Um, but you got that. You got the, the qualifying offer deadline. Um, and then you got, like, free agency that opened five days ago. How much does the Rule 5 draft – how, how much do all those things affect each other, but specifically how the Rule 5 draft affects, like, when how, how the Cubs are approaching free agency and the speed with which they're trying to go out and, and sign some of those guys on the market? Yeah, it's kind of wild. I mean, because you, you have like you have to keep those 40 man spots open if you're planning on signing one of these free agents. And it kind of depends like you have to even if, if as the Cubs, they're not intending on signing a um, signing one of these shortstops until later on <clears> down the road, you still have to account for those spots. And in case the market moves a little bit faster than you're expecting, that's th th those spots need to be taken care of and, and they need to be left open. So mm -hmm. That's that's the main reason why you're not adding seven guys here today, seven prospects, which there's seven there. You could very easily add seven very talented prospects to the 40 man roster. This is a very deep class of eligible prospects the Cubs have right now. But it's just it it's not because it's not going to happen because of roster construction uh, problems. Mm -hmm. 
There's so, a very so strong... what you're saying is they need to save room today for the Correa move tomorrow, and then the Judge move after that, and then of course the Trey Turner move the following day exactly. after that. It's all a part of the game plan, baby. Yeah. yeah. There's also a, space. for whatever <laughs> reason a very strong anti Rowan Wick uh, sentiment building in the chat. Yeah, there was a lot of anti Rowan Wick in the chat all season. All season, so. but that actually is a, it brings me to another good question. Do you foresee from the major league roster any other guys like getting pretty much you know getting released? We've got Rowan Wick, we know was maybe sort of on the bubble there towards the end of the season. He's still he's still around. I mean Ortega also was a bubble guy. Like, do you foresee any other moves made to open up? Spots on the forty man, whether today yeah. or in the Bode, coming like, future. Bodie's another name, right? Too yeah. like Bodie's at least. Oh, Bodie's off already, right? Yeah, Bodie was yeah. yeah, Bodie was, oh, yeah, was, uh, right was right waived and right. cleared waivers. Okay, yeah, but it, it feels like uh, it feels like those moves would have, would have already been taken care of and that wouldn't be handled again today. But like that's a, that's very possible. I, I mean, I'm looking at like Rafael Ortega, and mm-hmm. that's the first one that comes to mind to me, especially with all the rumors about the Cubs potentially going out and getting a like a defensive first center fielder. Um, if you're going after a defensive first center field, like a, not a long-term answer in the center field, it feels like whoever you bring in will kind of take that role of Rafael Ortega. You know, I mean, like we went into the 2022 with Ortega kind of serving as the, he's going to be in center field. He'll hold over until Brennan Davis comes up. Right. And I think as far as Brennan Davis goes, we're in the same position entering 2023 as we were in 2022. So like if, they're going to bring in a center fielder to play that exact same role. Why is Rafael Ortega still mm-hmm. on the roster at this point? So yeah. that that's the first guy I go to, um, and that opens up another spot. And then that's potentially another guy that can be added to the 40-man roster in terms of prospects if Ortega gets removed. Yeah, that's that's another thing I'm thinking of is, like, maybe not now if, if they don't plan on wanting more than, like, seven, six or seven prospects uh, added to the 40-man, but definitely as free agents – those spots will be end up being used for free agents, whether that's, you know, they end up with two after today and they can sign two free agents quickly and then they have to start releasing guys. I think that's what it comes down to is when do they want to get those free agents, who they're going to be. Um, and, yeah, like you, you mentioned, the center fielder, if they, if they don't get one, like Ortega is may, maybe the option for center field for a little bit next season. Yeah, and and something small to kind of take into account too is is that – because the Cubs have all these really good prospects and some that they can't protect from the Rule 5, Rule 5 draft, other teams have that issue too. So mm-hmm. in order to draft a guy in the Rule 5 draft, you have to have an open 40-man 40 40 man roster spot. So if they want to go out and draft somebody, um, and if the roster kind of allows for that to happen, then they have to have that 40-man roster spot open to take somebody from the Rays or take somebody from the Dodgers or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I like Tom's comment. He's uh... – said Viscaino, I'm guessing, is still MIA. And it's just been a very, like, no one knows what's going on with him. We, I, I'm just going to assume the Cubs are eventually just going to cut him because he just didn't show up. Um, I guess leading into that, like, who's some guys that you feel like the Cubs aren't going to be able to put on the 40-man that are, you're afraid that they might lose in the Rule 5 draft? Yeah, I, I'd say that, that the first guy is Cam Sanders. Cam Sanders just has that vibe where, like, he, he will not be protected from the Rule 5 draft, but it's almost surely he will be selected. I, I just – I don't know why. I just – I have that vibe with, with Cam Sanders for sure. Um, then there's some other guys, too, that are, like, we're, we're not kind of talking about as the Cubs will for sure protect, but a team might take a chance on a guy like Jake Reindel, who – has not been in the upper levels of the minors. He's a relief only prospect. Like he's only a reliever, and he kind of just took off this year. Um, he has a slider that I I argue that his slider is the best slider in the entire farm system. Uh, Jake Reindels, and teams go after in the Rule Five draft things that stand out. Whether it's a quirk, whether it's it's a, a, a one really talented part of your game, and Jake Randall has that. I know that he hasn't been in the upper minors. I know that he hasn't. Uh, he kind of he's an older guy for a reliever, but he's a guy that feels like a team. I, I tweeted the other day, and it feel the the protection process from the Rule Five draft. It just feels like one big game of like who will the Tampa Bay Rays take and make a stud. <laughs> and I, I when I look at a guy like like uh, uh, Jake Reindel, I see a guy that the Rays could make a stud. Or uh, same goes for Cam Sanders. Same goes for Ryan Jensen if they convert him to the bullpen. So I, I think there's some guys, and, and that's just that's been my mindset as I've been thinking about this Rule of 5 draft, which is kind of weird to think about. But the Tampa Bay Rays have been really, really damn good at that 
this whole process, you know. But isn't so. this also sort of a, a sign of better things to come? You want to worry about the franchise you root for having to lose guys in the Rule 5 draft because that means they're starting to stockpile talent yeah. uh, at different levels. You don't, want, you don't want to be the team that has no worries about the Rule 5 draft because that means you have no players that other teams yeah. might want. Like, this is, while it's a difficult day for the players that will be unprotected or are worrying about being unprotected, and it's a difficult day for the Cubs front office and trying to make those right moves, it is a good day for Cubs fans because you're starting to see that there's more talent in the system from top to bottom. So while everybody's worried about Cam Sanders and who else might be unprotected, just remember that this is part of the process of building a winner. And it, it's mm -hmm. a good sign today that the Cubs are thinking – and making difficult decisions about guys as opposed to being like, well, we'll just leave all these guys unprotected. And <laughs> this, and this is there. the good alternative. Yeah, this that, is what you want. That's what yeah. Jed has said, that it's, this is a good problem to have. You'd rather have too many good players that you can't put them all in the 40-man than to not have enough and not have any. And then you don't have to worry about who you're right. putting on the 40-man because none of them are really that worth it, right? Like it, Jed has said it's a good problem to have, and, and I <clears> assume every, like, you know, I'm assuming, Greg, you'd, agree like I, I look at it as like yeah you don't if you're the Cubs you don't want to lose any of these guys but the fact that you have so many is obviously a positive over a negative and, and I've kind of hit on a lot of the like the pitchers because that those are typically the guys that are selected in the rule five I mean there, there's there's all there's always some position players as well but predominantly it's it's kind of dominated by pitchers being selected so that's why I've kind of geared towards those guys but I mean there's some position players that are kind of fringe guys too mm -hmm. I, I know Darius Hill there's always a lot whenever I'm writing anything or, or podcasting or anything there's a lot of comments about Darius Hill because they point to the performance that he had in the minors this year uh, tied for the minor league lead in, in total hits over the course of the season so like th there's guys that are that are friend that are fringy in terms of position players too Chase Strumpf is another guy that I think kind of warrants discussion to being added that's another guy that he, he was drafted in the second round and he uh, shows some some really solid power uh, but just strikes out a ton. And um, but when he was drafted, when Chase Trump was drafted, he was drafted as a contact guy, like drafted as a hit tool. Um, so you kind of you always hold on hope that he can go back to uh, go back to that hit tool while still carrying that power to a certain degree. So I've kind of leaned on the pitchers, but the, the hitters are there, too. Yeah, interesting. Uh, you know, another thing is with like the rule five draft in general, we would have in the chat fans fired up about why a certain guy was playing on a certain day on a game when the season was over, and you were like, why is this guy in here? Well, that was part of the evaluation uh -huh. process, too, specifically for a day like today. Use Ortega as the example. He had plenty of opportunities this year to show you whether or not he's more valuable to this franchise than, say, Darius Hill, right? Like So mm -hmm. that's part of the Cubs' evaluation process. They wanted to see it in live action, even though the game's – didn't matter to you know unless you were betting on it like Cody. Uh, <laughs> at some point, the games didn't matter. Uh, remember that some of those angry decisions that we were all scratching our head, going "Why?" Today's part of the reason why. Absolutely. Yeah. So we can see where those prospects go. Um, do you think <clears throat> the one rumor we heard this week is that the Rays were in a similar situation to the Cubs, trying to protect certain guys on their roster, and that that had started multiple in-depth trade discussions with other teams, including the Cubs, Reds, and who was the other team? Angels. Angels, Angels. on pitching. Uh, do you think that somebody will make a big trade? One of the teams will make a trade of a player of significant name at some point. I, I, Blast I've now being the name I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah, I've grown accustomed to over the past year, over past years seeing a lot of like minor tinkering type trades on today. You know, and I I think that it's fun to kind of dream on Glasnow or like it, it's fun to dream on big names, but I feel like today there's so much wrapped into today, into today and like making the roster fit, not not even like perfecting the roster and making it as playoff caliber as possible it's like just making it fit within these 40 names and not losing guys and so i i think that's where you see a whole bunch of like the just like the little tinker trades right you see the guys on the on the back end of the 40-man roster the 
the Alfonso Rivas, the um, guys like Rowan Wick, guys like that, where we need to clear some space and a team feels like they can do something with Rowan Wick and you just roll with that. So I, I'm not holding out hope by any means that there's going to be a big splash trade today. I think if that happened, I would be, I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked if that yeah. happened, I feel like. Another thing you might see is, is teams that have, you know, like the Cubs that have kind of an overload of 40-man eligible prospects may end up trading one of those guys away for to another team for another minor leaguer that is not yet for uh, rule five eligible correct you, you see you see like a like the cubs are not willing to protect a guy like cam sanders but they might be willing to protect a guy who plays the outfield um and two like you're, you're so you're dealing with two different rule five eligible prospects that need to be added to a 40-man roster um and you just trade with an, with another team because you're more likely to add a guy i know like you had uh, Greg Zumak on on the show last week, and he's been pulling for uh, Dominic Fletcher from from mm-hmm. the Diamondbacks. So maybe the Diamondbacks aren't willing to add a guy like Dominic Fletcher to the forty uh, man roster because of their roster construction, but the Cubs are, uh, and maybe the the Diamondbacks are willing to add Cam Sanders, but the Cubs are not. So that's that's the kind of like what you uh, said, Ryan. Is that's that's what I kind of see happening today. Okay. Well, so Greg, uh, one question I have for you is like as a big prospect guy, I know you want the the major league team to do well and be successful, right? It, they they kind of go together, but like I'm talking to uh, our good friend Brendan over the last couple days, who has very quickly talked himself into Tyler Glass. Now he went from like, oh, the Rays are interested in making trades to like he's digging into Tyler Glass. Oh, it's happening. He's yeah, like he so fixated made. on it. But what I'm curious for you, Greg, is like when rumors like that start to go around and you start to see stuff kicked around like that, a potential big trade, are are you extra like nervous on a day like today just because it feels like the Cubs at least? I know you're you're talking maybe smaller trades, stuff that isn't that significant, but do you get a little on edge on a day like today just not knowing if something big could go down with, you know, guys you've been covering for this long? Yeah, I mean, I spend the entire summer uh, covering these minor league prospects. And so, like, by default, I just get a little bit more in tune with what they're doing and, and excited about seeing them make their way up to the bigs. And that was something we kind of laid out, me and Brian, on that first episode of Cubs on Deck, is just that, like, we want to bring kind of the human element to this prospect coverage. And by default, like, I'm not – I am I have not once, like, tried to, like, portray myself as, like, a reporter on the minor league system. I, like, I'm a fan covering this minor league system – and so I'm rooting for these guys to, to do as well as they possibly can. You know, I want to see them make it to the big leagues. And, I, and, and because I'm a Cubs fan, I want to see them make it to the big leagues with the Cubs and help out the big league team. Uh, but the Rule 5 draft is really weird when it comes to that for me. You know, because uh, if a guy doesn't get protected in this, in, for the, from the Rule 5 draft and added to the 40-man roster today, then you're looking at uh, he, he's stuck, right? Where hopefully mm-hmm. at that point, like for his career, that he, gets, he does get selected in the Rule 5 draft. Because then he can pursue his major league career. Yeah. After that, if that doesn't happen, then he's in the minors. You know, so I have a, a weird like attachment with these prospects, and I'm I'll be like the first to admit that. You know what I mean? So uh, I, as a Cubs fan, I want to see them perform well in the big leagues. I just I I love for it to be with the Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last time you were on the show, Greg, it was I think it was the first month of Christopher Morell's career, and we were sitting here, and I was I was dreaming about all the good things potentially. And he came back down to earth, and, you know, he had his ups and he had his downs. Um, But at at this point now, you know, I think all the things that we've said about him in terms of what we're worried about is probably the strikeout rate. Um, As someone who followed him in the minors where he showed that he could really adjust and cut down on the strikeouts, do you you think going into year two he can really get better at that like he did in the minors? Or do you think what we've seen is basically what he is? Um, where is your stance on that? Because you've, you've seen him a lot more than I than we have, considering we've just seen him on the major league team. As long as he hasn't Dude. been traded uh, this offseason, is, <laughs> is what he means. As right. long as he's still well, with the kinda, team. <laughs> it's kind of wild with Morell. I mean, because I, I, I had ranked him lower than most people um, <laughs> this year, right? And with that, when he came up and started killing it with the big league team, I was like, oh, damn, like, have I, have I com- like severely underrated – Christopher Morell is a prospect uh, and then he came back down to earth and that was more like the that I guess the streakiness to a certain level and I, I think that was more what I was expecting 
You know what I mean? And I, I think that I, I've said for the last few years or so that I, I see Morel. I, I don't think he has a full-time starting spot on a playoff contending team. I think that he's a utility man that logs a lot of at-bats throughout the year because he plays center field, because he plays third base. He, set, he plays some second. He can play shortstop if you absolutely need him to. And I think that's where his value comes is that flexibility and his ability to play those positions pretty damn well on defense too. It's not just like he's just playing there just to play there. Like he's, he's pretty damn good out there. So that's where his value comes. And then like offensively, it's just like anything offensively is icing on the cake to a certain degree, you know, and uh, that streakiness with the bats always going to be there with Morel, I feel like. And I'm just hoping that he can kind of continue to draw walks at a decent clip because that, like that raises his value an insane amount is being able to draw walks because he's going to strike out a decent amount. He hits the ball hard as hell. Like he, his exit velocity numbers are crazy. So if he can walk, that makes his value go way up, you know? And that's the reason why personally for me, I don't want to cap his talent level, like how far he can go, but you know that the Cubs have set limits for or ceilings for where they think, certain players can be even after they see them at the major league level for a little bit and that's why you see when you see rumors it's mostly us you know like mm-hmm. throwing these names out but when someone mentions glass now they're like well keegan thompson and christopher morell the question is do other teams value christopher morell as much as cubs fans do after watching him for you know a good portion of the season and loving his personality and what he brings to the there's no question he has value to a major league team. The question is, does he have the value that Cubs fans think, or does he have the value of what other teams think? And that's that's when you – listen, we mentioned it on the other podcast. We, I said glass now, and somebody said, okay, Keegan Thompson and Christopher Morrell. And I said, deal done, in, in my eyes. And that's nothing against those two guys. It's just where, after watching a lot of games, I think Keegan's – Ceiling might be higher than Christopher Morrell's, even though he's older. But you can see he has a really valuable role in the bullpen if he continues to pitch that way. Morrell, like Greg is saying, maybe the offense is a little bit streaky. Well, that's not somebody you're going to label as untradeable. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you don't like him in your franchise. I'm just saying if another team asks about him, you're not going to be like, no, 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 no. Like, you will meet fans, and some are in the chat, and I'm not saying they're wrong about this, but... That's why I don't say somebody is untradeable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think like last year is it creates an interesting situation for fans um, if you're removing a lot of the analysis from it because, you know, we know the team isn't going to be great. We're still going to Wrigley Field and trying to have a good time and you develop a real connection with those guys. Like Christopher Morrell was one of the main and, you know, if we were doing like a top 10, like I don't even know if there were 10 fun things last year right like Christopher Morell was a huge part of that so I get that it creates like this sense of attachment but we're transitioning hopefully into an era where this team is going to be more focused on winning a lot of games and competing with the Cardinals for the division and that changes what your needs are right Right. but like I do get it you know like watching Keegan Thompson was one of the most important thing we just spent a whole year basically primarily focused on yes. Keegan Thompson. So, like, when you see his name in a trade, it's like, uh, like I don't know how I feel about that. He was the, you know, the most talked about thing for us for an entire season. But, mm-hmm. you know, priorities change, right? But you have to I kind felt. of, like, take the take the heart out of it a little bit sometimes. And it's how I felt about Efros going into the trade <laughs> deadline, too. Sure. But, like, right. it, it turns out that that was a pretty good move. Right. Yeah. At least that's the way it looks. Um, we're and talking I, with I – uh, that- yeah, go ahead, Greg. Oh, I think that kind of what you guys are getting at, too, is is one of the reasons why I've been pounding the drum for a long time about how the Cubs shouldn't be focused on making trades for elite talent. They should be going out and signing these these players because they have the money to do so. Right. Mm-hmm. You you have a lot of the, you have a lot on this roster, whether it's it's currently in the minors coming up soon or currently there in the big leagues. You have guys that are really good complimentary pieces, right? I think Christopher Morrell, as a utility guy, is a good complimentary piece. I, I, think, have, like, I think Nico Horner, while I want him to be a superstar, I think he's a, a damn good complimentary piece. Go out and there, There's elite talent out on the free agent market right now. You have money to spend. Go out and buy those players. You don't need to trade from your complimentary pieces. You don't need to trade a Keegan Thompson, a Christopher Morrell, plus whatever else, for Tyler Glasnow. 
just go out and sign Jacob Degrom for a couple of years. I, I, it's just it, <laughs> there, there's talent out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, Maybe not Jacob Degrom, but whoever it might be. I think that is, that's especially the case for a lot of the, the the hitting talent. I don't think you need to trade for any hitting talent at all. Go mm-hmm. out and sign some of these guys. We'll oh, see like, Contreras is out there. If he's if he's projected the amount that if he's going to get the amount that he's been projected a lot of place, bring Wilson Contreras back because we know the bat's good. Yeah, you don't have to trade anybody for Carlos Correa, and we will get to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, but all this talk of prospects has me thinking I'm getting hungry. And Greenridge Farm is a Chicago local meat and cheese company offering you a better all-natural option. Makers of all-natural deli meat, sausages, and their famous meat sticks. Perfect for tailgating. We had their bratwurst and... Uh, Jalapeno cheddar was there at the tailgate on Sunday. They're great for happy hours, school lunches, all natural meat sticks, hard smoked for eight hours, 16 grams of protein per meat stick, and they are the perfect post workout snack. Meat sticks come in chicken, black forest, jalapeno cheddar, spicy chili. If you haven't tried them, you don't know what you're missing. Delicious because they're from recipes that have been generations in the making, and because they're all natural, they deliver a, flat, a fresh, flavorful alternative at snack time. You can always find them. In the refrigeration section at Costco, Sam's Club, or any of your local Chicagoland grocery stores. So right now, when you order three meat products at GreenRidgeFarm.com, include a pack of meat sticks in your cart. Those meat sticks are free. All you have to do is use the code CHGO at checkout. Green Ridge Farm, simply natural meat. Yeah, I mean, we talk about Green Ridge Farm. We've been talking about it forever because we've had them at the tailgates. Yeah, they're good. And, uh, you know, the meat sticks are awesome. And, again, a Chicago company. Right. Why, why in a city like Chicago would you get your meat from some company that's in Wisconsin? You think Wisconsin's got better meat than mm-hmm. Chicago? No. Come on, don't be ridiculous. Green Ridge Farm. Not even cheese. Green, Green Ridge no, Farm, cheese that's is right. better. Absolutely. I'll be our meat guy, Greg, because we're going to talk about meat a lot on the show. Yeah. yeah. Love it. You love if me, you're you in, love it. <laughs> I, I know you. I know you're a big Illini fan, Greg. And like, it's so cold here in Chicago that I'm considering, you know, flying out to Vegas to watch Illinois beat up on UCLA on Friday. And like, yep. I might log on to Game Time and buy tickets because I can just wait till the very I can fly to Vegas and then get on Game Time right before tip off and see how cheap these tickets are because that's what Game Time. Why Game Time is the best. You know, game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. Ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you never thought you could? 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate, floor seats at a concert? It's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. You won't find a better deal this season on Bulls, Blackhawks, the Bears, Bears. probably. Um, I think I named all the teams. Illinois, like I said. Uh, Mizzou, if you're down there. Not Illini Hoops there. coming up. Illini Hoops, yes. We're basketball school. Uh, created by the fans for the fans. Guarantees the lowest price. If you love CHGO, then you'll love Game Time. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the description here on YouTube or if you're listening to the podcast version. It's all in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app and score the best seats to all your favorite events. You know, Cody, I'm looking now at game time, and you can get tickets to see the Michigan Wolverines play the oh boy. Fighting Here Illini at Michigan right, Stadium go. this Saturday if you wanted to watch well, Michigan football well, now I beat the look. Illini. That's a, yeah, that's a no win situation for you, Corey, because if as they as beat the cover, Illini, we're all like, we whatever. Cover. If they lose, it's the worst <laughs> day of your said. life. Said as long we're as just hoping cover, to cover. Not we're, we're hoping to cover in the big house. It doesn't have good team often, win, but great teams cover. Oh yeah, absolutely. See, Greg did, knows. Greg knows. did not cover. We're just trying to cover on that. Saturday, and again, we lost our va- we lost our uh, our badge of being a football school two weeks ago when they lost to Michigan State basketball we're, school basketball until, school until, until further, further notice. noted until further notice. <laughs> yes. Cody and I won't be speaking when Michigan and Illinois play in basketball. I think that's going to go poorly. <laughs> well, like we with Herb in the Missouri office, too, I'm like public enemy number one sometimes around here. Right, it happens. All right, yeah, so the, Jedi, I, Chicago, I knew I the guess. chat was going to get to this eventually. <laughs> like, we talked a little prospects, and now everybody's starting to fire in that John Paul Morosi is all but guaranteeing yeah. Correa to the Cubs will happen. And, say that and, like, and, and, but, so a lot of people are saying, first of all, I will say this. There are names that go through Twitter from reporters that I know that I don't trust <laughs> because I know they're just being either A, used, 
by front offices or they're just throwing it out to increase their I, I'm not and I'm not naming names I'm saying but it does exist yeah JP Morosi is not one of those guys mm-hmm. no he is not fooled by front offices so there where there, there is smoke there is fire on this I'm not saying it's a done deal I'm just saying he's one of the names that I trust so Avi, he was on the MLB Network while we're on the air, so mm-hmm. I, I can't listen to this. But right, right. going through the replies to the MLB Network tweet, and some people are quoting it with what he said, uh, it sounds like he basically took a shot at the Cubs for taking some years off of spending and said that this would be the year, he believes, they finally act like the big market team that they yeah. are, is one of the quotes I believe that he said. I'm trusting people on Twitter who are putting things in quotes. So (laughs) if he didn't say that, don't blame me. Uh, But he is also really in on Carlos Correa to the Cubs. Uh, I don't think he guaranteed it, but right. it sounds like yeah. he's very, no, again, the chat said he's pretty very much all strongly but guaranteed suggesting. Saying they're, they're heavily linked. I think yeah. he said that Turner and Correa are the Cubs' yeah. top two candidates, and he believes it's Correa. Yeah. Assuming that's true. Before Love we get it. to the Super Chat, Love I want to ask Greg, because, you know, obviously you're a prospect guy, but you also care about the major league team. So when you it gets to like free agency and stuff and, and you, you, you read the rumors, but as a guy who, again, obviously you want the major league team to do well, but as a guy who also wants to see these minor leaguers succeed, like how do you kind of balance like wanting the Cubs to get a guy like Carlos Correa, but also wanting Ed Howard to have the chance to be a shortstop when the time eventually comes and all this kind of stuff. Cause you care about these, these minor leaguers who are coming up that you've watched, you know, for years. So when you're when you're signing when the Cubs are going out and signing a guy like Correa or signing a top talent, it's like all right that that's that stands by itself. I feel like to a certain degree, you know, I mean, it, you're you're not gonna instead of being hopeful for any type any prospect. I'm not even gonna say it doesn't matter who it is. Any prospect, you can go out and get Carlos Correa. You go out and get Carlos Correa. You know, so that that's kind of a different story. I I think for years there there were a good five to eight years where the Cubs were going out and getting back like some pretty crappy back into the rotation starters. And they were blocking potential pieces that were coming up through AAA that could have been that number five starter. We're not talking, they, they weren't signing number two. They were signing a whole bunch of number fives and number sixes. Mm-hmm. And that frustrates me to a certain degree because I feel like you're not putting faith and you're not trusting your prospects that you've spent a lot of time and money to develop throughout their minor league careers. So that that's where I, I get kind of kind of upset during the, the free agency period. But um, I think you can also use free agents as a way to ease ease prospects into the mix at the major league level. I think that uh, Corey and Brendan, I think you guys were talking about uh, Jose Abreu on, on when you guys were together last. And uh, that's a great example of easing Matt Mervis in. You got Jose Abreu who's getting older, who's a right-handed bat, who can play first base in DH. You got Matt Mervis, who's a young prospect coming up, who can play first base in DH, who's a lefty and just needs eased into the major league mix. So you can play the free agent market to your advantage with prospects as well. And I think that Jose Abreu is a really good example with Matt Mervis of that. In, in like when you talk about Correa, and we've we've done it till we're blue in the face about Nico Horner play shortstop, but you don't you have to keep adding great talent. He'd be that guy. The perfect scenario is what the Astros had. It wasn't that Correa wasn't a great player. They got to the point where he could become a free agent, and they had Pena waiting in the wings. That's what you want to do. You want to have Correa on your roster, win a World Series with him, and then have Christian Hernandez float up the roster and be like, well, we can lose Correa at this point, and then you either let him walk away or you trade him or you move him to third base. or you. That's, That's how you build a great team that's good for a long period of time is to have not get rid of those prospects by trading them away for one great star. Sign the free agents that you need to. Don't let the deal be so outrageous that it hampers you for doing anything in the future, which, by the way, should not happen with the Cubs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because they haven't been spending and they got tons of money. So if Correa, is, if Correa is the guy or if Turner is the backup plan, either way, I'm all about it. Uh, you, I do. We do have some news here. It's a minor deal, but actually Shane in the chat was correct on this. Uh, this is from Mark Topkin of the Tampa Bay Times. I'm, I, I've double checked this. This is the real writer. <laughs> I, I know Twitter is a little weird at the moment. Um, the Rays have a deal in place to trade Mastrobuoni. 
Greg, I don't know if you want to correct my pronunciation it's on that. Miles Mastroboni. Uh, actually, the Cubs had his brother in the system for a while. Okay. Uh, the return would be a Class A pitcher if completed. Uh, that would open one of the several spots. He's talking for the Rays. Mark Topkin is a Tampa Bay Rays writer. Uh, well, so this is good that we have Greg here because I have never heard of this man. Uh, so <laughs> help help yeah. us out here, Greg. Yeah, uh, he he's been he's hit pretty well in the minors. Um, and Miles Mastroboni is a, a second baseman. I, I, I think he's a, yeah. I was gonna say I think he's a second baseman, but okay. he might play some outfield. I think potentially. Um, I think mostly second base though. Mm-hmm. And twenty six. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's 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 interesting. I because I I, I expected these trades, like we were talking about earlier on the show, I expected these trades to kind of come in the form of um, kind of trading, exchanging rule five eligible guys. So that could still be the case if it's a, if it's a single A guy, like I said, Jake Rindle was in single A. Um, so that might be a, a potential fit there. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. It's second base. Um, he did play some outfield, uh, <laughs> but 27 years old um, kind of seems like a guy who's, just the guy that the Rays probably don't plan on picking up anytime soon or bringing up anytime soon. That's what it feels like, a guy that's that old that hasn't gotten that shot yet, I guess. If I remember right, he has a pretty good hit tool. Um, so he's it, it, more like hit over power for sure, and that kind of lines up with the second base profile. But uh, I, we've seen the, the Cubs kind of like to go after these guys recently. We, we have Nick Madrigal. We have Nico Horner that are the hit first uh, tools. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of, th- this a little bit, cause I know he's gotten a taste of the big leagues. It reminds me a little bit of like acquiring Zach McKinstry at the deadline or not quite the deadline, but this, this year where Zach McKinstry was a guy who absolutely tore it up in the minor leagues. And then when he was in the bigs with the Dodgers just did not do as well. I d- didn't do very well at all. So this feels very similar to that kind of acquisition with miles master run. It also mm-hmm. sets off the alarm in my head thinking, okay, is this a move to replace the the depth that you have at that position if somebody else, if McKinstry's no longer with the team or if Madrigal's moved or if Morell has moved. Like are are the where do they envision this guy going at that log jam and who's the piece that would be moving out potentially that might coincide with it? We do have a super chat we need to get to. Lil Yumper Lil Yumper said guy. that, you know, he he noticed that there was a lot of Correa talk and he said, Is is Cody willing ready to be heard again? I'm uh, yeah, I'm ready to be heard again. I'm putting my <laughs> I've put my uh my you know, all my faith and my my hopes and dreams of this roster being better out there. Um and I have said that there is no excuse for the Cubs to not be in on one of these four shortstops. I found myself standing Dansby Swanson yesterday. I mean, I've gone to levels I never thought I'd reach, little Yumper. Uh so yeah, if they don't get one of these guys, I'm yeah. I'm gonna be very hurt. You They're said a, you'd be mad, but so what about mm-hmm. the flip side? Let's say mm-hmm. they do get Correa. Let's just devil's advocate. They get Correa in the next forty eight hours, and they sign Carlos Correa. Is it already a successful off season? It's definitely no matter what else happens. If they get Correa to play short, and Nico moves to second, and you have Mervis slash whoever yeah. at first. I would say you already yes. considered it's at least. Well, what grade would you put the free agency at? I'd put it at a B minus. Yeah, I was gonna say B minus. At least B- the beginnings minus. of a great offseason. It's the beginning of at a great le- offseason. I go at and least a B. And, and you're setting the tone. I mean, I've said it way too many times now. <laughs> setting the tone. You're telling the fan base that you that you're gonna try to be be a good team, and you're letting the division know, like, hey, we're back. You know what I mean, right. like. That's setting the tone. That's what the Cubs need to be like. Yeah, I, there's obviously a lot of holes to still fill. But if you sign a guy like the talent level of a Carlos Correa in the next 48 hours before anything else, oh my god! I don't think I, it would already <laughs> be. And I don't think you could stop at saying that was a successful off season. I'd consider it a pretty good one because I also think whatever happened, if they were to sign Correa or Turner, either one of them, in my opinion. It also makes your job much easier of trying to convince one of those starting pitchers and or sure. Jose yeah. Abreu, whoever you might target, to say, listen, you're not going to waste away the, the last couple years of your career playing at Wrigley Field in, a, in a, just an average organization. Look, we just added Correa, yeah. and this is not where we're stopping. We're going to be in the hunt. I guess I, I'm, I'm with JJ in the chat. Like, it, that's the move they need to make. First. 
But mm-hmm. make but, that the first. But if move. you told me that was the only thing they were going to do, the only like significant thing, right. I would have that similar question to JJ. I would say like, look, it's a great move. I want them to play in that elite talent pool. It's mm-hmm. what this organization should be doing. It would just be a weird place to stop. Like Carlos Correa is not making the 2022 Cubs better than the St. Louis Cardinals. Right. And you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to like trade the entire system to make 2023 the the year that you're going all in for it, but you could make a couple other moves and then you'd be like, okay, yeah, we've yeah. unlike like, last year, this like is a Kiermaier really competitive and Smiley team. and a couple of other smaller names, but you also have that headliner in Correa or Turner, whoever it might be. I think you have to be at least pretty happy about it because oh, yeah. it's like what Greg was saying earlier in the podcast. I'd rather see them add to this franchise through cash right now than I would rather see them go out and just give away a bunch of the prospects that they just built up in the farm system, right? That I don't want to put yeah. words in your mouth, but that's what yeah. you were saying, Greg, right? Yeah, and and yeah, exactly. Well, I think that using the free agent, I mean, Corey, what's your motto with the way you look at the, the free agent market over the course of the entire of the entire offseason, right? Where you have to oh, view the yeah, entire yeah. thing. Judge it in its um, totality. Okay. There you go. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. We can't for. do that. I, think we, that's I can't wait for that. that, that that's important I can't wait. Here, right? That's uh, kind of like whenever the Cubs traded you Darvish and I was one of the only people who didn't freak out because I was like, okay, I'm going to wait till the end of the offseason and see how things worked out. And then they didn't do anything. And – and now everyone's just yeah, but I, I, I think that. I think it's always worthwhile to yeah. see what they're going to do. Yeah, right? so the trade and that was kind of the thing stuff. like they absolutely have to play in this shortstop pool. And mm-hmm. when Brendan and I talked about that, I wasn't taking another position, but I was just saying, like, if they missed on all of them, wait and see if there is anything else that Jed mm-hmm. could possibly do. Who becomes available via trade, et cetera. It's very difficult to see how they would do that. Right. But you just never know, right? Like sometimes stuff happens that, you know, we weren't expecting them to sign Stroman. I remember that happened uh, last winter. And like we got a rumor like an hour before it happened. And before that, it was everybody saying the opposite of what they're saying now. Yeah. They're not signing anybody. They're not spending any money. They're cutting payroll again. You know, Jesse yeah. Rogers was saying all of that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, then they get Stroman. They come back from the lockout. They get Saya. Wasn't enough, but yeah, I'm just always an advocate for just spending. relax and let you, know, you don't want to ju- right? Like this guy yeah. they got from the Rays. That's not the only move they're going to make. There's no reason to react to that move with any we'll sort see. of strong master bony. Master bony. Yeah. Uh, Greg, that's what I think it is. Switching gears a little bit here. Um, report, Careful with that. Report from uh, Jesse Rogers <laughs> um, that Wilson is declining the qualifying offer today. Um, I think that was sort of the expectation already uh, moving on. But um, one, just I guess your gut reaction again as a Cubs fan uh, of seeing that news and kind of knowing this is probably the end um but also too what are the cubs going to do at catcher they may bring in a free agent but they also i mean miguel amaya moses balesteros like where where is this organization at in terms of replacing what wilson brought to the table yeah i i I said it when when the cubs ended up not trading wilson at the deadline that if they don't extend him that it was just a colossal failure, right? Because what you're saying is that his trade value is only worth the return, uh, the compensation pick in the draft from not or from him declining the the qualifying offer here. And it's why maybe I'm just completely misvaluing Wilson Contreras and that he is not worth more than the comp pick in the draft. But it feels like you can get way more than that in in the on the trade market. And so that this whole thing with Wilson Contreras from from the beginning of the from a couple of years back now I guess dating back that long it's just been so so strange and so and now you look at the the free the the projections in terms of how much that he might get if he's getting four years to eighty million if he's getting three years I think that that Kylie McDaniel had him at like three years fifty million or something like that like not a whole lot and if you're not signing Wilson Contreras back at that amount of money even the four over eighty then it's really strange what this team is doing, um, especially when you're looking at the the way the catching is set up in, in the Cubs farm system right now. I know that you wouldn't use Wilson Contreras if you signed him as your catcher 150 games a year. That's not that's not what you can do long term to get his offensive value. But um, I think that the Cubs would go in next year and and probably 
with using Jan Gomes, using PJ Higgins, and then bringing probably a third catcher in at some point. At that at that style, you're going with like kind of punting on offensive production at the mm-hmm. catcher catcher position. Having a catcher in Jan Gomes that works well with the pitching staff, and there's a lot of value in that. Obviously, that 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 has value. But if you're doing that, you got to go out and get some bats on the free agent market. If you're mm-hmm. if you're punting Wilson Contreras' offensive <laughs> production, then and I think that's the big thing with these big four shortstops, right? I th- at, le- at least three of the four big shortstops where you have a good defensive shortstop in Nico Horner, but you're not getting one of these shortstops because he plays defense better than Nico Horner. You're getting mm-hmm. one of these shortstops because he can match. You're getting him because <laughs> Carlos Correa is one of the best hitters in Major League Baseball. The same goes for Trey Turner. Um, Xander Bogart, Bogarts has been very good offensively and really like improves your entire lineup if you sign him. So it, it just it brings the importance of getting offensive talent at, in free agency if you don't bring back Wilson Contreras because going that route with catchers in a vacuum going that route with catchers is totally fine but look mm-hmm. at like the the Astros right the mm-hmm. Astros did that with Martin Maldonado but they also had a, a whole lot of really good hitters around them so it didn't really matter that you're punting on the nine spot in the order that's kind of how I felt about it since you know since all the the information that came out after the deadline about how teams were viewing it and you know then we hear the after the World Series that the Cubs and the Astros were, you know, they had a trade for Contreras and front office, all that stuff. Not just the Cubs, but the Astros front office uh, got blocked by their own owner. But I've kind of just, you're right. The comp pick is definitely not enough. And the only way the Cubs can make this up is by bringing in offensive bat, like bats. They got to bring in some bats too, because it, it's, it's pretty much writing on the wall that they want to go more defensive with the catcher position. So if you're going to do that, you got to bring in some bats to replace that production. Cause I, I've just gotten to a point now where I feel like you're not going to miss him. Like we probably are going to like, we've missed other guys that have gone in my, in my opinion. And so if you, if the only way that I feel like we would though, is if they did not, uh, do what Greg said in terms of just go getting some bats, and because I I can be okay with the Cubs going full defensive on at the catcher position, but you gotta you gotta replace that offense. I I think it, and the difference between what what you're saying and what the chat is saying is like I I think what we're all trying to say is if the Cubs have decided he's not worth twenty million a season, uh, nobody has a problem with that. The problem they have is that at the trade deadline they didn't get more than a compensation pick at this point because. Yeah. Is that because they tried to take this Astros thing to the finish line and then they were like, whoops, we're out of time because they were juggling too many things at one time? That may be the case. We just don't know. I mean, something seems like the Astros it went just fired, late. The Astros just fired their GM and whoever else yeah. What over the weekend, right? So, like, and I it's, I don't really know why other than the fact that he got – they only offered him, like, a one-year extension or whatever. Um so there's a lot of issues yeah. with that. But, like, that entire story that passing came out with after the World Series is really interesting. And so clearly the Cubs did try to trade him. It's just, like, their best deal was with the Astros, and the Astros said no. And so I guess on one hand you can say, yeah, maybe Jed waited too long like you're, yeah. you're questioning. It's possible. Or, or maybe, maybe, you know, maybe there really was no other value. I mean, the Which Mets, would be crazy. The Mets have to regret not going and getting him or Hap based off how things played out after after the season, but, I mean, or after the second half of the year. But, I mean, I don't know. The, it, we always thought it was going to be the Mets, and then to, to hear the story about the Astros at the end, not that it mattered. They won the World Series. But it's just – to me, it's just going to be very interesting to see his, his market because, like, I've, I've remained pretty steady on this take of just – I think as long as they bring in some bats – to replace that offense, we're, I just don't think we're going to miss him like we miss some of the other guys that have gone. Well, Cody, you can still, you know, if he goes to the Cardinals, you can still get that Cardinals uh, Contreras jersey, or I'll get my <laughs> Cubs uh, Correa jersey because Chicago, you've already got the best coverage for your favorite teams, so get fitted out in the best sports gear around. Foco has you covered from Soldier Field to the living room, north side or south side. Hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, everything in between. When Correa hits, you're going to want that jersey. Here's where to get it. Get decked out like tomorrow with apparel from the leader in sports, merch, and collectibles, Foco. Looking for that perfect football gift for the football fan in your life? Maybe a Justin Fields jersey? 
FOCO's got you covered with hoodies to fight the Lake Michigan breeze, too. Check out FOCO.com or click the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Use the promo code CHGO for 10% off. Correa jersey, if they yeah. sign him, will be a hot jersey this winter. And then if you get it, and then you get to next football season. Yeah. Still, hopefully, you know, one of our tailgates is still going to be warm out. And then you can you, you can wear your Correa jersey if you want to a Bears tailgate while also playing with the cornhole boards we got from Chi-Town Cornhole. That's right. Right? Chi-Town Custom Cornhole, the number one cornhole provider for Chicagoland and Illinois since 2007. Their signature box style design can be digitally printed, covered in vinyl, and painted. Uh, corn, the cornhole boards, I say bags, so saying cornhole is uh-huh. still kind of weird for right. me, but we'll go with it. We're in uh, the Midwest. The, it's bags. The cornhole boards <laughs> come with built-in drink holders, recessed on the back, LEDs that light up the hole, and exterior handles for easy carrying and handcrafted scorekeepers. It's veteran-owned and operated. They can ship the, uh, the boards anywhere, and all, and they do offer local pickups. They specialize in corporate designs for your company's next marketing or social event, wedding gifts, and gifts for all occasions, and especially for tailgaters and backyard barbecues. Go check out their website, ChiTownCornhole.com, and make sure to follow them on Instagram at Chi-Town Custom Cornhole Boards. Greg, bags or cornhole? What do you think? They must have a really good product considering it's really called bags. Yeah, right? Okay, so. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll ride with it. As long as they're – it's because the you know, C in Chicago, C in Cornhole has to be Y. Because everyone here says bags. I don't know right, anyone from Chicago bags. that says Cornhole. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. But we'll, 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 we'll ride with it because they're, they're really good. <laughs> yeah, Missouri is the first time I ever heard Cornhole. But they would say cornhole in Missouri. Yeah, but well, they also they also like <laughs> Listen, they, they don't say trick or treat. They tell like jokes to get God. candy on Halloween. What an awful Very weird. Ooh, that's bizarre. On. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Mike Dub says Master Boney sounds like an Italian beef kind of guy. Already has a Chicago feel to it. I was thinking already. <laughs> I don't know if we can get him hooked up with Green Ridge Farm. Maybe a sponsorship there, or you know he could be the spokesperson, or maybe Portillo's. Mm. Master Boney. Yeah, Master, Master Boney beef. <laughs> Ma- Master, I mean, could- Master Bona beef. Oh, Bona Whoa. beef. There you go. It's too easy. It. Oh, it's too way easy. too easy. Too easy. I, if I were, if you're his agent, you got to get on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about what about the uh, report that um, Tom Ferducci said that he thinks Philadelphia and St. Louis will get one of those premier shortstops? Do, do you do you really think that? Like, first of all, <laughs> that take that would take two off the list, and you'd be thinking, well, the Dodgers are going to need somebody like. Mm-hmm. The trickle down effect would yeah. be that some of these other big name teams would also. I don't and know. that, if if that were the case, again, a reason for the Cubs to be the first domino to push because if that is the yeah. case and those two teams sign, then whoever's paying for that last free agent is going to be way overpaying yeah. most likely. I'm curious, what do you think? What do you think, Greg? When, when was the last time the Cardinals signed any type of free agent ever? I mean, like, it, it, it might happen, that's but a, it would go way out of the ordinary Cody's. for them. You know what I mean? Like, that's it's Cody's formula. It's it just doesn't make sense. Like I, I I haven't seen them do it for the past however many years. So, but at the same time, the Cubs haven't done it for the past few years either. So <laughs> I don't know. I I that's just that that doesn't seem like the cardinal way. I guess uh-huh. I don't know. I've Ooh. seen Cardinals people You're saying making that. my hair stand. Up, I really right? have seen Cardinals <laughs> oh, people man. say that like that doesn't happen. Like that, I've actually seen that. That's not the Cardinals' way. Of Cardinals people have said that on yeah, Twitter. Like, I mean, <laughs> even at the trade deadline too. Like they don't, they don't acquire big trade pieces at the deadline either, because like they're just more than more than content just sticking with whatever roster they have yeah. and getting into the playoffs and calling it a day. You know, I, I just that that's not the Cardinals don't make these big splash moves, and because they rely on bringing up Brandon Donovan or whatever the hell his name was, Lars Newt Bar, thirty home runs, and Lars Newt Bar and guys like that, <laughs> and and that's how they thrive. Yeah. The Phillies, though, make sense. I mean, they, they've shown to spend money. So they're, they're the one team of the what Verducci said that I'm like, oh, boy. But he was yeah. already – like someone already said that they're all in on Trey Turner. Right. But, you know, we're going to see. We'll see how much they're willing to pay. I, 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 I'm with you, though, Greg. Like, first it was Contreras. Now it's like, oh, the Cardinals are going to get one of the shortstops. If, any, if, if there's any free agent that stupid franchise should be doing – is going after a pitcher. They need a. They need pitching, dude. They they like they they definitely they're, need that. Let's not. They're going to go back and, and resign Jose ideas, Quintana. Yeah. And call it a day. I'm not trying to give them <laughs> ideas, but maybe they should just. I don't know. Use their brain. Like let <laughs> let the Cubs get who they need uh, and like go away. I, 
I just I I'm been very triggered by Cardinals Twitter the last couple of days. People keep sending me DMs of like their dumb fan base send, sending dumb tweets, and it, I'm very triggered, very triggered, and I'm ready. I, I can tell. I need the Cubs to just win 95 <laughs> games next year and what and, and and beat them somehow, some way, get well, them out of the playoffs. Do Jed, do Jed and Carter know what they're doing to Cody? <laughs> no, this poor I, man. No, come on, no. Jed. And, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, this has been fun, but I keep getting the rap signal from Lawrence in the background because we have another Lawrence podcast back coming up. And forth. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Greg. Greg, you're welcome here anytime you want to come on. In fact, we love to have you on as much as we'd love to come on. Absolutely. If you're, if you're ever in Chicago, yeah, if you're ever in Chicago, yeah. man. Cubs on yeah, Deck I'm, podcast. So go ahead and subscribe. Get all your Cubs stuff that you can. They'll be talking about good stuff too. Uh, you can also follow Greg on Twitter at at out of the vines is that still the twitter handle correct yep still at out of the vines we're trying to get the the show kicked off and get get rolling and um like i said brian smith is going to be my co-host more times than not uh, greg zumack will be on co-hosting with me sometimes and then when it's neither of those two guys it'll be the uh, minor league broadcasters uh, for the pelicans the south bend cubs and the iowa cubs that, there you go uh, they'll hop on and co-host with me so and then uh cody when i get him on that one time <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> so, sounds good Thanks. anytime you have max bain on just invite me there you go hell yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> sounds good and by the way we will we will have emergency podcast as soon as any big cubs off-season moves Mm. happen so like master boney we're not going to do a, a special podcast <laughs> but if correa were to sign you can expect an emergency podcast here at chgo uh the rest of us for twitter uh at luke stuckmeyer cody underscore chgo ryan underscore a underscore herrera and Corey underscore cubs uh thanks for following we have a special guest coming in tomorrow we're coming on tomorrow yep. is right tommy how to be pitching twitter. coach we're gonna, we're pitching gonna, coach of the chicago cubs on twitter uh, yeah, he'll be on tomorrow, 120. So oh, you already it. said it. Never mind. Be there, 120. 120 Greg, tomorrow. thanks for your time. We appreciate it, bud. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings. Have a great night and fly the W.